So I am talking about using Indic knowledge systems for giving leadership for New India, which our Prime Minister talks about. New India is a confident India. New India is not a copycat. New India is a lion. You know, it should emerge as a lion king. And they have, uh, they, there are strengths in our own knowledge system, but our approach needs to be changed. Our mindset needs to be changed. It has to become more progressive. At the same time, it has to be deep rooted in our own culture. Because ontology from Indian point of view is very, very important, you know, because different people understand term Indology. So we also need to demystify the term Indology itself and this work uh, Indology Foundation uh, is doing. And so. This is a very, very important mission that Indology Foundation is doing. And uh, uh, just now I heard uh, Raj Vedamji also, uh, and I would like to know more from all the participants because I know each one of you is doing something or other for this uh, important mission. I would call it as a mission because reintroducing our own correct history uh, and uh, defining Indology from Indian point of view is very, very important, you know, because different people understand term Indology. Uh, so we also need to demystify the term Indology itself and this work uh, Indology Foundation uh, is doing. And so I'm here to uh, show my respect uh, to uh, all of you, especially the kind of work all of you are doing. And uh, uh, any support or any help uh, or any contribution, uh, my bit from my side, uh, I will be very happy to do so. Okay, thank you, Laliji. Uh, I actually uh, uh, don't want to speak for a long time because we have uh, two eminent speakers uh, in this session. And uh, uh, I would also be uh, happy to listen to them and also interact with all of you. you know. So more than a, a lecture, I would enjoy interaction with you. Uh, but uh, to begin with, I would uh, like to share some of my thoughts. Yeah, I, I come from a biochemistry background. I am basically a chemist, later on biochemist, and then my interest uh, went into uh, uh, Ayurveda and uh, traditional knowledge systems. Uh, and that is because uh, Although I have not studied Ayurveda, I think uh, uh, in India, you know, Ayurveda is there in every home. Yoga is there in every home. We don't have to really necessarily go to Ayurveda college or yoga school uh, to learn Ayurveda and yoga. We grow with this. This is part of our culture. So uh, I have been uh, really uh, getting glimpses uh, of this culture uh, uh, and knowledge uh, from my own home. So I was curious, you know, how things happen and why uh, these kinds of Ayurvedic interventions, which we may call them, some of them as home remedies work. And I have seen that many of them really work, you know, be it turmeric or uh, uh, many other simple uh, home remedies. Uh, so that was in my mind. So when I went to science, you know, I decided that I need to do some research to understand what is the scientific basis of what we are doing. At that point, I must tell you that initially uh, during my uh, uh, student days or research student days during my doctorate days, you know, uh, obviously because our training is such that uh, we are uh, taught in the reductionist fashion. You know? So the Aristotelian logic uh, based on which our entire uh, education and research or scientific methods are based on uh, believes that uh, uh, we can uh, <coughs> or we should uh, break things into parts, you know, smaller and smaller parts. And uh, that gives us better understanding, deeper insights uh, in that uh, particular uh, object, you know. 
which is true you know we, we if you go on uh, uh, dividing uh, main object into parts your understanding of the parts is more deeper and therefore uh, the uh, atomic uh, sciences molecular biology all this emerged as that uh, sequel and uh, while aristotelian logic uh, has contributed significantly uh, to development of modern science i was also wondering that there is uh, another side to it because unless we know the whole knowledge of part is not sufficient so we actually need both we need a holistic view and we also need the molecular view and from that perspective i was thinking that ayurveda or basic indian knowledge systems you know uh, based on uh, darshan shastra uh, give us a holistic view so ayurveda theory uh, is not necessarily based on limited to aristotelian logic you know uh, which is based on reductionist approach you know? uh, but ayurveda theory is based on pancham mahabhuta theory the mahabhuta theory the dosha uh, and the prakriti uh, the gunas all these are taken into consideration and therefore ayurveda looks at a person as a person and not symptoms or disease in isolation and so ayurveda i uh, was really uh, fascinated uh, i was fascinated to ayurveda uh, from that perspective and although in initial stages my main focus was using ayurveda as a discovery engine to develop new drugs later i realized that reducing ayurveda to herbal medicine is a great disservice to ayurveda because ayurveda is much more than modern med- um, um, ayurveda is much more than herbal medicine you know we can't say uh, or look only at the medicinal plant wealth which is there in ayurveda it is definitely a great wealth but it is not only uh, the ayurveda reflection you know because general perception outside is ayurveda meaning herbal medicine jadi buti no ayurveda is a great science and we have developed a, a logic chart based on knowledge systems or knowledge dots available in ayurveda and we could at the first level identify more than 230 knowledge points from ayurveda starting from uh, uh, the basic concept of ayurveda which is loka purush uh, uh, sankalpana or uh, pinda brahmand sankalpana from there going to ashtanga ayurveda or eight branches of ayurveda in between you will find that there are connections logical connections in a logic chart you know with forward and backward linkages Uh, giving you the holistic picture of what ayurveda logic is what are the foundations of ayurvedic concepts and how they are interconnected with each other you know so that systems ayurveda we have no we have named that chart as systems ayurveda chart and i will be happy to share that chart uh, with you uh, later if we uh, get time but this kind of a logic chart opened my eyes and in 2000 i hypothesized that ayurveda is a personalized medicine now please remember that in year 2000 human genome project was just emerging uh, it was not completed and uh, the knowledge uh, regarding the pharmacogenomics also was emerging but at that time i realized that while today we may be talking about pharmacogenomics and at that time uh, you know uh, the understanding regarding cancer first came in that there are three genetic subtypes of the cancer and therefore cancer treatment and cancer drugs cannot be same in all the people you know they will differ based on what genotype which medicine will be suitable for them this was the first attempt in which pharmacogenomics actually started Uh, evolving and when i look at pharmacogenomics i think ayurveda was using pharmacogenomics right from the beginning you know what pit cup ayurveda classifies population based on this what pit cup dosha uh, in three broad categories and then i hypothesized that ayurveda is a personalized medicine because ayurvedic vaidya will not give you medicine same medicine to different people although the symptoms may be same in different people 
ayurvedic vaidya will diagnose you based on your prakruti and the uh, uh, approach to treatment will differ based on which dosha prakruti or what i what is the doshic balance what is the doshic predominance or what is the doshic vitiation all these components uh, and many other components actually will will be taken care uh, uh, before uh, deciding the therapeutic strategy so this kind of a personalized medicine uh, which is there today in the mainstream of modern medicine or evidence based medicine actually was i think that ayurveda is based of that but our problem is in india uh, that when somebody else invents something you know we have a tendency to go back to our knowledge sources and then tell the world oh what you are telling today we knew couple of thousands of year ago now this analysis is also important but we should do little reverse you know what we should do we should go back to our knowledge systems and we should identify those knowledge gems which today's world doesn't know and we should focus our energy on that research and come out with some innovative solutions you know for example uh, we decided that we will look at the personalized uh, approach of ayurveda and that time we were working in rheumatoid arthritis so we had a cohort of patients who are in rheumatoid arthritis and in modern biology we know the relationship of rheumatoid arthritis which is which with a gene which is known as hla drb1 gene you know and so we did single gene study and we studied polymorphism of genes uh, hla drb1 gene and we showed that in a blind study if you classify a population in vat pit cuff and if you do the gene analysis the alleles present in these people you know uh, they are different in vata they are different in pit and they are different in kapha later on we also did a study uh, to see sip uh, polymorphism you know uh, drug metabolizing enzyme you know uh, cyp uh, sip polymorphism and then we showed that typical alleles which are known in modern science to be present only in rapid metabolizers are predominant in pitta pitta prakruti uh, people you know so these kinds of correlations led to a new science discipline or new branch of science which today is known as iu genomics we published this study in 2005 in an international journal and this study was also presented by one of my colleague dr kalpana joshi and dr arvin chopra who is also one of the co-author of this landmark paper which we published in jscm this study was also presented at cold spring harbor symposium uh, on pharmacogenomics in 2005 why i gave you this example is there are hundreds of such knowledge points in ayurveda and there is a huge scope to do research not only on herbal medicines but on basic concepts of ayurveda and that's what we did by way of iu genomics and for instance in ayurveda there is a concept called shat kriya kal ayurveda believes that every disease progresses through six stages now imagine if we are able to identify a person you know who is in the first or second stage of the disease which will be so important as a prognosis you know because one of the fundamental principle of uh, personalized medicine is early diagnosis and early intervention for disease like diabetes you know by the time you know that person is diabetic you know it's too late so if you are able to really identify a prognosis of the diabetes much earlier which i think will be possible with ayurvedic concept of shat kriya kal if we do not only uh, metabolomics but also do various kinds of studies using omics technology we will be able to identify early markers which we can uh, which can help us uh, to identify uh, prognosis very very powerfully you know and this will be a great con- contribution for future modern medicine and that will give leadership for india so i am talking about using indic knowledge systems for giving leadership for new india which our prime minister talks about new india is a confident india new india is not a copycat new india is a lion you know it should emerge as a lion king and they have uh, they, there are strengths in our own knowledge system but our approach needs to be changed you know? our mindset needs to be changed it has to become more progressive at the same time it has to be deep rooted in our own culture because one of my uh, senior friend always talks about this you know 
and he i agree with him you know he says that i have traveled all over india all over world you know i have interacted with uh, people from different cultures different political ideologies different philosophical ideologies but i have seen india is typically probably the only country where elite citizens of this country take pride in ridiculing their own culture i think we have to change this mindset at the same time we should not become dogmatic you know blindly accepting what because times have changed and uh, maybe uh, uh, we we also don't know what are the real timelines in history i was so happy when dr sanjeev sanyal told me that some of the excavations around delhi you know there are indications that we are not trapped in uh, 300 400 bc you know that kind of a time line is not really true as far as india uh, indian knowledge system is concerned and these excavations may uh, uh, give scientific evidence that uh, our civilization existed much earlier and uh, scientists like naneshwar chobe uh, who th- i think is there present today uh, from bhu is trying to do this excellent work you know and uh, we are all trying uh, in different ways to support him in his endeavor you know dr thangraj from ccmb these are the people who are trying to uh, look at and do some kind of a carbon dating and other uh, dna analysis uh, from these uh, samples which have been uh, collected uh, around delhi and this will give us a scientific leadership and reestablish our own uh, power of knowledge which we had at that time but as i told you we should not stop there we should look at the future and use powerfully our knowledge system to evolve future science i think with this i will stop now and uh, let lalit ji uh, take over if he is ready uh, i would also like to know more about endology foundation and as i told you uh, whatever uh, views uh, i have expressed so far you know they are still evolving and uh, to enrich them interaction with uh, people uh, like you who are participating in this important uh, webinar will be very valuable uh, for me and i am here to learn from you as well thank you very much Thank you.